guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at my undisclosed location because guess what? We have another 2020 Toyota vehicle. This is a Corolla XSE hatchback. Lots of versatility, lots of usability, and definitely gonna have that Toyota reliability. But let's talk about the Corolla hatchback for a second. The hatchback, or also known, Toyota actually called it a liftback, has been around since 1976, if you could believe that. Toyota, as a corporation, has been around since 1937. Over the decades, they have definitely have been known to build some very reliable vehicles. For a little bit of a time period, things got a little bland. People referred to their Toyota vehicles as refrigerators or other appliances, but I promise you, 2020, there are lots of great changes coming, lots of great things being built, and some exi exciting styling, especially with this 2020 Corolla hatchback. So let's go ahead, dive in. This one is a very high trim level. It's the XSE. I'm gonna walk you through some of the differences that this particular one has, but let's go ahead and dive in. Right off the bat, this styling came into fruition 2019. That was the first year of the return of the hatchback in this design. Right off the bat, I love the styling of the headlight housing. Full LED, now this one has optional adaptive headlights. What that means is, is that the headlight actually turns with the steering wheel to give you better visibility. But the great news is, no matter what trim you go with, you're gonna get full LED headlights on the front of your Toyota Corolla. But I love the design, and especially the way it kind of integrates into the top portion of the front fascia. Now, as we drop down, no fake vents down here. You do have functional fog lamps, a little bit of gloss black, and I, I think it works great with the silver. That's one thing I'm very happy about with this particular Corolla hatchback is the silver color really works on the car. Now, as we come across the front end of the business, you can see how I was pointing out to you that headlight design, how it integrates nicely into the gloss black trim, that Toyota logo. Now, down front, this is all functional. If you're wondering, well, Joe, why is this blocked out? The reason why this midsection of the grill is blocked out is because there is structure behind there for crash safety that needs to be there. And that's why they sealed that top portion off. But the rest of it is functional. And I really think that this open grill design that Toyota is moving towards, which a lot of other brands have been using, works perfect on the Corolla, whether it's the sedan or this hatchback. Little bit of an extension down here on the lower portion, but really aggressive for a Corolla from one side to the other. Now, when we hop up onto the hood, you can see where the body lines start. They actually start on that front fascia and go into the hood. And I think one of my favorite parts is the way it kind of curves towards the windshield and then disappears. Very nice design. As we come across the fender area, you can see the different levels that we're working with too. There's a lot of design that's been put into this to capture your attention. When we get to the wheel and tire combo, this is specific for the XSE. That's an 18 inch wheel. Love the machined aluminum finish, the darker, uh, almost like a gunmetal gray, really I think fits the look of this one. Uh, it's almost like if you're gonna go Corolla, you gotta go with the 18 inch wheels because it really sets it off very, very nicely. And I, you can see how the brushed aluminum kind of comes all the way around to 225 on the width, 45 series on the sidewall. Nice setup. Now, as we rise up, nothing really strong happening in the top portion of the fender, but you can see where the belt line is gonna be picked up right here into the door. You get your gloss black mirror caps. This one has another option. We talked about the headlight, the adaptive headlights. That's an option. Another one that's been checked off is the blacked out roof. I'm telling you right now, when they told me that this thing was a two-tone, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm gonna like it. It fits it nicely. It really gives it a classy look. And people have been commenting on the car when I've been at gas stations, how they like the look of the black roof with the silver. Now you can see that very prominent body line. We drop down, you do have a, a side sill extension, really gives it a nice sporty look. And I think that's probably one of the challenges with this Corolla hatchback is that now it's looking really sporty that the numbers underneath the hood, the horsepower numbers, I think are gonna need to come up to kind of fit the look because it looks really, really fast just sitting here. Nice roof design. I like the way they brought the metallic black into the, the uh, rear pillar here. And you can see that body line kind of curves up, that belt line we were looking at. And then another one starts and goes right into your rear fender area. It's kind of cool the way it kind of flares out as you get towards the rear. Now at the rear, 
Very, very tasteful taillight design. Same story, very, very sharp uh, angular design, LED taillights. We drop down, you can see some of the, the body lines. I think unique is definitely a word you would use to describe the back hatch area. It kind of extends out, which gives it a really interesting uh, design perspective, but I I'm liking it. Large gloss black area across the bottom. You can see our red XSE badging. I think the zonk of the day on this Toyota Corolla. Those are fake exhaust vents. I don't know why they gotta be fake. They look cool. You could have made them functional or better yet, this is what I imagine. How about a twin exhaust outlet right here in the center? That would be nice. How about a TRD version with about 250 horsepower? Sign me up with a six-speed manual. But why don't we go ahead? We can't talk about what ifs and maybes. Let's pop the hood and see what's powering this Corolla hatchback. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. I am gonna zonk it. They do use a prop rod still, but underneath that hood, that tried and true inline four, that's a two liter inline four, naturally aspirated engine, 169 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque. I would like to see at least 200 horsepower. This thing would be a blast to drive uh, with 200 horsepower. Even 250 would make it, that'd be the icing on the cake. But it, this particular one is mated to a CVT. Now you can get a six-speed manual as well, so I definitely have to applaud Toyota for uh, giving us the choice of the CVT or the six-speed manual. The vehicle weighs 3,100 pounds, zero to 60 in about 8.7 seconds, uh, seconds, quarter mile in 16.7, top speed around 115 miles an hour. And the best part is you're gonna get maximum MPGs out of this Toyota Corolla. And this isn't even a hybrid. In the city, 30 miles to the gallon, on the highway, 38 miles to the gallon. But why don't we fire it up and see what it sounds like out of those fake exhausts. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel of this Toyota Corolla hatchback. You do have full electric assist with this particular trim. Very nice to get that lower lumbar, everything. The seats are so comfortable. Um, I've been driving this around for the past few days and definitely my body does not feel sore one bit. Plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room. Remember, this is sitting on Toyota's global architecture, the same global architecture that TNGA of the Camry and also the RAV4 it's gonna make a more rigid structure and allow more room in here. Steering wheel, I love the thickness. The size is great. Even a little bit of silver trim, and I think it's smart to go flat black on the buttons. When we come inside, you can see the dash setup. Now, the XSE trim has that seven inch display in there. What's really wonderful is you could toggle through a ton of different information in the center. You have an analog tack and that analog fuel gauge and coolant gauge, and then watch this. When you select sport mode, which this has, everything turns red. So you could actually get a little bit quicker acceleration, uh, better throttle response and whatnot by hitting that sport mode. When you're done feeling racy, you hit it again and you're right back. But that's a nice seven inch display, very clear. This is also gonna have all of Toyota's 2.0 sensing technology. So the lane keep assist, the blind spot monitoring, all those things to make sure that you're gonna arrive alive at your destination. But while we go ahead, Let's check out the back seat and see if your passengers are going to enjoy riding in this Corolla hatchback. All right, guys, we're inside this Toyota Corolla hatchback 2020. I know you're probably saying, well, Joe, I like the Corollas. This one's an XSE. You mentioned some uh, options on it. How much is this particular one? This one is right at around $27,000. That's the MSRP. Let's see what you get for the money. Now, the interior is very, very futuristic and hip and kind of matches the exterior with the two-tone. You have like a off-white, very, very light gray top portion of the door panel, very soft material. I like that stitch work. You drop your way down. You have some darker material there. That leatherette material on the armrest with the white contrast stitching looks very high class. A little bit of gloss black on the handle to close the door not going to be a big deal to clean and then you can see the very small pocket that's the one thing is the door pocket is on the smaller side you got a bottle of water in there you might be able to stack up a couple twinkies that's about it now when you go from the door panel to the dash same soft material i like the stitch work 
Even the AC vent has a wonderful shape. This one has the optional JBL sound system, which is gonna give you some better tunes. In the center here, this is really the big discussion point. This is that iPad style infotainment system. The thing is, is that Toyota has designed this to make it easy for the user. This may not look the best when it comes to aesthetics, but it works the best when you're behind the wheel of this Corolla. It's an eight inch screen, as you can see, navigation, Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto yet. So that is the one sore spot. It is a JBL unit as well that goes with the optional speaker system. And you can see, very easy to navigate through. You could have your three screens set up. You're listening to 80s on eight, uh, which is that XM Sirius channel, uh, jamming out to your 80s. Very, very easy to get to. And then you go right back to home. You want your navigation super size. There she is on that eight inch screen. Now you do have dual climate control and just a little bit of gloss black. It's nothing off putting. I like the angle of it. It's easy to get to. Your start stop button is all the way around the corner here, which is a little challenging to see when you're getting in, but trust me, it'll be intuitive once you own this car for a little bit. Now, as we continue to drop down, this one has optional wireless charging. Now, one thing I noticed that was a little bit of, a, of an annoyance is that when you put your phone on here to charge, many times I kept hitting the seat heaters. So these are for uh, heating the front seats. And I noticed that after the seat would get hot and then I'd be like, oh, I hit the button. So that's the one zonk is the design where this switch is, is very close to where you're putting the phone and you're gonna hit it a lot. I do like the way though they took this material, brought it around the inside, little bit of gloss black. You have a sport mode button, which I'll show you what that's all about when you come to the business side. You do have the ability to shut off the traction control. This is gonna control your CVT transmission. Technically, it's a CVT hybrid, because it's got first gear is an actual gear. The rest of it is the CVT bands. Gloss black, little bit of silver trim. Very, very slim on the center console. You have two cup holders. There's your key fob. The key fobs need to be updated for the, the Toyotas. It's kind of on the cheaper side. It's very light, which means it's not gonna pull your pants down, but the problem is it's just very, very, cheap feeling on the back, lock, unlock. I guess that's all you need. No remote start or anything like that. Two cup holders, like I said. Armrest is a little on the harder side, but I do like the contrast stitching. We open it up and you got a USB in here and a 12 volt and a nice little cubby that you could stack up your Twinkies or even some uh, Ho-Hos in there. Or maybe if you're feeling a little Debbie-ish, you could go ahead and get those oatmeal uh, cream pies. Those are, those are good. Seats, same two-tone material. I like the leatherette material going on. This is even nice. This fabric that they use, it looks good and it kind of holds you in place. And I'm telling you right now, soft as a baby's butt, but also supportive. I think the one thing I'm missing in here, especially being an XE, XSE trim, no sunroof. Not on this particular one. So I would like to see that at $27,000, should be a sunroof. But why don't you get on over here to the business end? I'll show you behind the wheel of this 2020 Corolla. All right, guys, back seat time. Now, one thing to be aware of is when you're getting in and out, the roof line kind of curves down. You're just gonna make sure that, especially if you're taller like myself, to not hit your head as you're getting in and out. But sitting here, I do have plenty of headroom. I'm able to sit up straight. I'm even able to rise a little bit and I'm not making contact with the headliner. I do like on the backs of the seats, everything is leather. If you have kids, this is probably gonna be a sore spot because as they touch this, it's gonna get dirty, it's gonna get sticky and icky, but the good news is there are plenty of cleaning supplies out there where you can take care of your car and get all those sticky fingerprints off. You do get large pockets for an iPad, for an Abacus, for an old Sony Discman, you could slide in there. And then here's where it's a little bit zonk filled for me. This is a $27,000 vehicle, no rear AC and no USB or not even a 12 volt. So to me, that's a missed opportunity for a high trim like the XSE to not have that connectivity. I guess the good news is you can put your Jolly Ranchers and Fireballs in here, but the bad news is if your phone dies, those candies are not gonna charge it. Armrest, we pull it down. It's a very good height. It's got a nice softness to it, two cup holders. But why don't we go ahead and check out the biggest part of any hatchback. Let's check out that cargo area and see how much room we have. All right, guys, cargo area time in the lift back. We'll use that old name from 1976. You push the button, you're gonna have to use your own muscles. No big deal, it's very light. Now here's the interesting thing. You do actually have a little bit more room back here than the Corolla sedan. If you're wondering, well, what is the hard number? You're looking at 18 cubic feet of space 
in the back portion of this hatchback. One of the things I'm confused about is how high this sits. Now, if you lift this up, which we're gonna do for you, you can see you have your spare and, and whatnot there. So I can't lower the floor any more in here. And by taking things from the ground level and bringing it in, it's kind of a little high. Now, the one thing I do like is you have these wonderful side pockets, which you could put items there and that's gonna stop it from rolling around. But I'm just a little confused why this is so high or needs to be that way. I know there's a spare and all that, but I wish they would have redesigned it a little bit just to get that floor a little bit lower. I'll go ahead and flop down the seat. You just push on the tab and flop it down. There's one side. I'm going to come around on this side. There's a nice little button at the top. You flop it down and you can see just how much room that you have. That's the great news is, is that the floor is basically flat from the cargo area all the way over those rear seats. But why don't we get to the best part of any car review on Rady's Rides. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's take this Corolla for a spin. All right, guys, we're in the 2020 Toyota Corolla XSE trim. The one thing that's really wonderful about how the Corolla hatchback drives, it's very smooth. That CVT hybrid, remember you got first gear is an actual gear, the rest of it are the CVT bands. Um, it makes it a little different than your ordinary run of the mill CVT. I still wish that they would put the eight speed from the Toyota Camry into this Corolla hatchback, but super smooth, very, very comfortable, and definitely gives you at least some flexibility when it comes to that hatchback. Now the hatchback cargo area is smaller compared definitely to the Civic and also the Mazda 3, which would be the main competitors to this car. But uh, nice that they decided to go the hatchback style to give you a little bit more opportunity for something different. One thing that you'll definitely love about this vehicle is all the safety features that you get that are standard, that Toyota Sensing 2.0. The iPad style screen in the Corolla, I'm not really in love with it. The nice thing though is everything is within proper distance for where you're gonna reach, where you're gonna look, and Toyota did that on purpose. They set the interior up perfectly so that whether you're new to Toyotas or have been a customer of Toyotas, everything makes sense. Visibility out the front is great. Even out the back window, you would think smaller rear window on the hatchback, um, sort of angled. It's, it's very clear. Side mirrors are great. And for a compact car, it's on the quieter side in here, uh, which, is, which is nice. The feedback is interesting because it's not on point like a Civic or the Mazda 3, but the good news is over the new Mazda 3 at least, this has a multi uh, a point uh, rear suspension. So multi-link rear suspension compared to, to uh, Mazda decided to now go to back to the torsion beam as a cost cutting feature. But let's see how we accelerate here on throttle. Remember, front wheel drive. So you do get that high RPM when you're floored, but remember, many people have told me, listen, if you're not flooring the CVT, then you're not gonna get that loud engine noise. I just really firmly believe that a standard, regular automatic transmission is the way to go in a vehicle if you're gonna go automatic. The great news is you can get a Corolla hatchback in a six-speed manual, and it's actually a fun manual to shift through and easy. So if you're new to driving, that definitely would be a great setup, especially the clutch pickup point is amazing in it. You're gonna get great returns on your MPGs in this car and seats, they're supportive, they're comfortable, they're not too soft. There's been some Toyota products that we've been in where it's just way too soft, almost like I was sitting on a marshmallow. This hits a nice balance. It's just that rear seat's a little tight and like I said, the, the cargo area is on the smaller side, but here we are at, at just cruising speeds on the highway and it does get the job done perfectly as you would expect. It's just that if you want a little bit more engaging drive, feedback to the steering wheel, I would say go Civic um, or Mazda 3. Even with the torsion beam, you're still getting great feedback from the front wheels in the Mazda 3. And there's only certain situations you're really gonna get hung up on that rear torsion beam. In this car though, it really is 
kind of like a do it all type of car. It's smooth, it's comfortable, gonna get you the good MPGs, but it's also fun to drive. What we're gonna do is, is remember I pointed out earlier, you do have manual shift mode. You slide the shifter to the left. You can either use the shifter or the paddles on the back of the steering wheel. I'm gonna use the paddles. Acceleration, here we go. Using the paddles definitely makes the drive a lot more enjoyable in this Corolla hatchback. It's all simulated gears, obviously, and it's a simulated eight-speed automatic with the CVT, but handling is on point. There is a little bit of body roll there. Nothing too crazy, but definitely a Civic Sport hatchback is gonna out-handle you in a heartbeat. But it does hold a line very, very nicely, and throttle input is, is right on point where you want it to be, nice and composed and balanced through this transition here. Holds a line nice. You are getting the body roll, but that's to be expected. This isn't a TRD version. We'll see, I'm sure they're gonna come out with a TRD version of this car. Um, and it's definitely gonna handle like it's supposed to when you wanna turn up the wick. But hopefully this gives you a nice overall feel of the Corolla hatchback. We're gonna wrap it up and get back to our undisclosed location. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a great time with this 2020 Toyota Corolla Hatchback XSE. Is this a competitor against the Honda Civic Hatchback and the Mazda 3 Hatchback and the other plethora of cars in that compact car segment? I would say 100%. And that's the great thing about Toyota and this Corolla. So many different trims. You got sedans, hatchbacks, and hybrids that they're gonna fit every type of lifestyle. So I wanna definitely give a huge shout out and a thank you to Corey and the rest of the crew at Toyota for allowing Radies Rise access to this press fleet vehicle. If it's compact cars like these you wanna keep seeing on the channel, leave a comment in that comment section. If you are new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. I gotta give it up to my wonderful, beautiful wife, Lori. Working that camera like a champ, getting every angle of this hatchback so that you can make the best decision when buying your compact car as your next purchase. So thank you, Lori. I know they all appreciate you. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.